because you can run a play to where you're making 7,200 a day. And the way you make that 7,200 a day is... What's up, this is your boy JT Automations back in with another video. I'm here with my brother, the Boat Goat. We're going to talk about starting your own boat business and give you guys resources so you can tap in with him and learn how to do this business the right way and scale it up right after the intro. Let's get into it. <music> my brother first and foremost welcome to the channel uh I, I gave you a little mini intro before the people that may not know do you mind telling the people uh what's your name and what do you do hey what's going on everybody my name is shot but i go by the boat goat listen man i'm from washington dc i have been given the title of being the boat goat the boat guru the guy you come to when you're trying to start your boat or jet ski rental uh, business man and listen I appreciate you uh, having me on your platform, man, to pour into the people, letting the people know what they need to do and where to get started with their boats, man. Absolutely, bro. So how did you get into the boat business? Is this a family business or like just how you got into it? Man, honestly, it, it was it, it was God, man. Um, truth be told, you know, I was drug dealer trying to find my way out. You know, I had already owned boats or what have you. And um, I ended up trading my bow router in for a pontoon and um, I was out one day with the kids and uh, having lunch and I pulled up to the dock and a guy was just like, yo, you, like you rent your boat out? And I'm like, nah, you know, at that time I was getting out of the military and um, trying to come out of the street. So, you know, my pride was on my shoulder. I was a little big head. I had a little money in my pocket. So I'm like, nah, get away from me. Like this is my boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I, I quickly stopped it and, and thought to myself, you know, maybe this is God talking to me, man. Let me let me get up off of this boat and go after this man and see what um what he's trying to do. Um, and I did exactly that. You know, I told the kids to stay on the boat. I ran after the guy and I'm like, yo, you know, what you trying to do? And he was like, you know, I just want to take my family out on the boat. And, um, you know, me not knowing anything about the business, but just being a, a true hustler. And um and grind, I was just like, bet, let's do it. Um, so we exchanged information, and you know, at that time, you know, not really having the the business mindset or in the right mindset, period. You know, I'm just in my head, like, man, this nigga ain't gonna never call me, man. Um, but Lord and behold, he called me the very next day. I'm like, yo, I'm where where I met you at uh with the family. And at that time, the kids and I, we were out again doing the same thing that we were doing the day prior, having lunch, enjoying the water. Mm -hmm. And um, good thing my grandmother lived, you know, near the water. I quickly called her up and like, yo, I need you to get the kids. I got to go make some money right quick. So I rushed over to drop the kids off and I got back over to the guy and his family. And, you know, the first thing he was like was, well, how much I owe you? And, you know, again, not knowing about the business. You know, I just told him 400 because at the time, my uh, my personal loan, which is what I used to even get the boat, um, was about 367 or 397. So I was just in my head, like, you know, thinking fast, like, let me just get what I owe for the month. And um, he paid it without, you know, any hesitation. So I was just as I was cruising, you know, watching him and his family enjoy themselves. I was just thinking like yo, this is really a, a, a play right here. This guy that's paying me $400 for a couple of hours to come out on the water. You know, let me run this play once a month. You know, if I do this once a month, that means this boat going to be free for me. Absolutely. But, you know, having, a, again, the hustle uh, in me, I'm like, Shh, this month ain't going to work. We're going to have to do this, you know, once a week or, you know, once a day. And that's what it really would have turned into. It turned into me running that play once a month and then, once a week. And then, you know, now it's to the point to where we're going out three, four times a day on uh, each boat. Be completely ignorant of this. So you got to educate us on it. Also, he has a full training program, a mentorship program. All of that is linked down in the description below. We're going to talk more about the actual training program here in a second, but just high level for the people like me with South Carolina educations, right? Um, What's the startup cost for anybody watching this video that say, I want to use my credit or cash and get into the boat rental business? 
Well, um, I, I, I teach everyone to, to utilize uh, the OPM system, other people's money. Uh, we're not going to use our hard earned you know, money to, to go out and buy anything. So um, first, I say leverage your credit. That's exactly what I did. Uh, at the time, my credit wasn't too good. So I just did what I had to do to, to um, fix my credit. And then once it got to where I was able to obtain a loan, uh, that's what I did. I went to the uh, Federal Credit Union. I give you three banks right now. You can definitely go to Navy Federal, um, First American Cre Credit Union. And then for those who have OK credit, you can go to uh, Rock Solid um, Funding. Now, when you pull up Rock Solid, it's going to come up with trailers. Um, and and they, 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 they normally uh, fund people who are getting into the car haul inside of trucking. Uh, that's how I learned about it because I also own a trucking company, but um, they also do up to 10000 on um, recreational use. So just be careful when going into the banks, you know, you're there to get a personal loan um, and, and nothing else. And what I did at the time was um, I bought four jet skis and this pontoon boat all at one time. And that's kind of like the play that you have to run. If you don't have business funding at the time, I didn't have any business funding working two years straight, 20, 22 hours a day. And I had this promise the kids, you know, we're going to find something different to do this summer. Um, so I just got something that was, you know, real enjoyable for the, for the family, but you can get a brand new Bentley. Pond. I like the Bentley pontoons because you can scale the world Bentley, right? When people see that word Bentley, it's like, Oh, I'm on a Bentley, you know what I mean? And that's one of the first things that I realized when I started the business, like when people got onto the boat, the first thing they did was started taking pictures of the Bentley side. And I was like, you know what? That's free marketing and promo for me because, you know, it, it, when we go anywhere that's nice and, you know, luxurious, the first thing we start doing is taking videos and pictures. Mm -hmm. And so what is your, what is your audience going to do? They're going to say, yo, where you at? Yeah, so that's what it was for me. It was like, that's how I was getting clientele because they were sending on other people, um, Instagram and, and, you know, Snapchat. And then I took it a step further from there. I started taking stickers and posting them all over the boat. So at whatever angle you take, my Instagram tag is going to be in your picture. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's kind of, but back to your question, uh, with the Bentley pontoon, you can find those, uh, brand new, uh, for like 30 to 35,000. I typically uh, go towards the Bentley Pontus, the 240 Cruise. It's like a base model, uh, but it's real nice. You can hold up to 16 people on it on, on the recreational side. Commercial side, you can only hold up to whatever your, your captain's license um, say that you're able to, to, to hold up to. Or if you're bare boating, you can have up to 12 people um, on the boat. Uh, for, the, for the jet skis, I always recommend the uh Cedu Sparks and those are running about 5600 um brand new uh but you only typically buy those when you're like in lakes or rivers or calm waters when you start touching the the oceans and the big body waters uh you want to move to either your GTI CDUs or your EX Sport um Yamahas I'm just a big Cedu guy um I don't get paid from them but I really support Cedu because they have that inlet cooler system and what that is, is just like with, uh, with the cars, we have a cooler system to keep the engine cool uh, in the wintertime. Um, that cooler uh, prevents the engine from freezing and they're getting cracks within the block to where it prevents you from having to replace the whole engine. So that's the same thing with the Sea-Doo. Sea doo is the only uh, manufacturer that has a type of system in the jet skis to where um, you're not having to worry about that in the wintertime because you do have to winterize all of your equipment in the wintertime to prevent that. And with your, your Yamahas and your Kawasaki's, uh, they get cooled by the water that they're ridden on. So um, as, the, as, as they're driving, that water that's being shot out of the back, um, that's how it's getting cooled. Whereas on the sea it, it's it's using that coolant. So that's why I always say go to the sea especially if you knew, um, because that's something that I had to go through when I first got into business being, you know, not, not, I'm not going to say naive, but not knowing the business. Um, I didn't winterize my Yamaha. And um, when I, when the next season came up, I went to go start it and it wouldn't turn over. It was like, it was kind of like stuck. So when I took it to the shop, they were like, yo, you're going to have to replace the whole engine. And what I quickly learned is 
the amount that is going to uh, be for you to replace these engines, you might as well buy a brand new jet ski. So I just like, all right, I'm I'm just you know to prevent this, I'm just not gonna mess with the Yamahas or the or the uh, Kawasaki's. Um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend anyone that's getting it new into the business to go towards the Kawasaki's anyway, because it's just like um, for those who know about cars, it's just like having a, a Cadillac Escalade and a uh, a Chevy Tahoe Suburban next to each other. They're the same vehicles, you know, some have the same motors, um, body style is just the difference in the light and, you know, the interior, the Escalade have a little bit more bells and whistles, but um, it's the same vehicle. So it's the same thing with the, the Cedars and Yamaha and the Kawasaki's, the Kawasaki's you spend in, you know, 14, 15, 20,000. And by the time you spend that on one jet ski, you can go over to Cedar and buy you about four or five Cedar Sparks and leverage faster than you would with just that one. Oh, that's game. So as somebody, because I heard you say you're on a trucking company as well. So you are in a unique space where you can educate us on comparing both sides. So somebody that, that does learn from you and get this game, and, and they want to get, uh, let's say they want to start off with jet skis because he also has an ebook available uh, that teaches people the jet ski business as well. All of those resources are down below as well. So if somebody invests in your ebook and want to learn the jet ski business, how much money realistically uh, have you seen to be in jet skis? You can run a play to where you're making 7200 a day. What the hell did you just say? 7200 a day. Damn! And the way you make that 7,200 a day is you're shutting your doors for six days out of the week, right? The reason why you're doing that is to force customers in on that one day to guarantee you a sellout versus if you having your doors open seven days a week, you're allowing customers come in throughout the week and that 7,200 will be made throughout the week versus that one day. So when I first started, I quickly picked up on that because there's a restaurant here local. They only open two days out of the week. And I always wondered why they always close for five days and not open all seven days. And I spoke to the, the owner and like, if we open for two days, people will come through and they're going to sell us out versus open up every day. And some nights we having to throw food away. We open these two days, they, they come in, they sell us out. So it's the same with same thing with the jet ski. You start with that one day, you force them to come in. You charge them one fifty an hour per jet ski. That means that you're making nine hundred dollars per hour, and in the summertime we have about eight hours of sunlight, so that's eight hours. So you do nine hundred times eight. That's seventy two hundred dollars. So you gave us the game on the jet ski. What if they jump into the mentorship and now they learn from you the boat side of the game? How much money can somebody make with a with a with a single boat? So it just depends. Um. Here in DC, I'm charging twelve hundred for three hours, and like I said, we go out three or four times a day, so upwards of uh, thirty six to forty two hundred a day, and that's just on the boat rental. But there's many ways to scale within the business. I.e., you can easily go over to West Marine and go purchase a three hundred dollars uh, tube that carries three people that you could charge per rental on the boat. Or you could just run the, the, the two play by itself and still make the same 7,200. So when you come out and you rent the boat for 1,200, me being who I am, I know you, you have kids. When you get there, I got this pretty tube standing right there. And like, hey, you, you want to grab the tube? It's only 200 for the duration of your ride. And me knowing how it is, you know, like when you go in a grocery store, when you walk in the aisles, they got the candy bars and the gum and all that stuff standing right there. Not because they didn't have any space on, on the floor, but they know you're going you gonna to move off emotion and impulse right there. You see it, you're going to want it. So I did the same thing with the tube. I brought the tube with the boat when I know there's kids because I know them kids going to see it. They're going to say, mommy, daddy, let, let's go ahead and get the tube. And nine times out of 10, the parent not going to back down. So you putting that tube in there. Now you don't went from 1200 for those three hours. Now I'm bumping it up to 14 to 1500 for those three hours. And then when you only have the adults on there, I also come from the club uh, background promoting um, and owning two clubs myself. Um, I know how I can scale and leverage liquor, right? So when, when adults come, they want to do two things. They want to eat and they want to drink. So what do I do? I have additional bottles of liquor on the boat so if they want to buy it, you know, I'm spending $45, $50 on a bottle. I'm then turning around selling it for $250, $300, $500. 
Um, same thing with the food. We have little knickknacks, little 50 cent bags of chips. You know, I'm taking, I'm, I'm charging $5 for that bag of chips. So I'm leveraging, scaling everything uh, that I have, you know, right in front of me uh, to, to easily take that number from little to big. Um, in Mexico, my yacht is going out for 2400 for three hours. So it's like double over there. Uh, and the reason why I'm able to obtain that is because one is bigger. I could put more people in there. But also, I know a lot of people when they're traveling and on vacation, where are they going? They're going to the Caribbean. When they go into the Caribbean, nine times out of 10, they come in in bulk. They come in in groups. So I always price everything as if they're going to the club. So we could put about 25 people on a yacht. So I just put the number at $100 per person. So I just, you know, I sit and I think about different ways that I can scale within the business. Um, I also, the parking lot, the parking lot is completely free to me, but I use that parking lot to scale. So when you book your jet ski, you think you're paying 150, but when it's all said and done, you're really paying 184 because I'm charging you an additional $25 to park on the parking lot that I don't that I don't pay for. And then you got your little tax included at the end. So when it's all said and done, you're paying 184 and not that 150. I was <laughs> I was on my mentees yesterday and I pulled up, you know, the report and, and, and let them see what was going on. And I was showing them, listen, you can make an additional 60 or 70 thousand dollars just off charging 25 or 35, you know, on, on a parking lot. Something that I'm going to do additional. It's a serious business. It's a life changing business. This is definitely something you should learn, teach to, to your kids, your loved ones, and start creating generational wealth. So until next time, to all my hustlers stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.